ready to go. Just reset the video a bit. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome people on live stream and in the Zoom uh, meeting to the Cash Plasma Reactor Group for Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. And uh, as is our custom here in Cash Plasma Reactor Group, we have Lee Coates to start things off. I see, Lee, you finally got that thing to light up. It's just glowing away there, it seems. What's, can you uh, tell us uh, what's happening with, uh, with your nifty device of the week here? Not hearing, I'll unmute, or whoops, unmute this, you. There we go. Uh, this week I did an Infinity Quantum 6 reactor, like uh, NASA's favorite beast. Uh, it's got the the quad cores and the in the battery capacitors, so it supposedly has 138 field interactions uh, for the plasma energy going through it. Or and uh, first one of these I've made. I just got it finished today, so it's really still drying out a little bit. But uh, so, what's the idea? You say it's a uh it's got four main uh, um, coil sets. Is is that the way it works? No, each each battery plasma capa each battery capacitor. The the co it's not a, a solid core wire to it. It's it got an infinity loop in the in the in the middle of the capacitor. Mm -hmm. So this one's got uh, like three bends, or in other words, four wires, uh, and then you twist them together. To make the infinity loops okay and the idea is to get more field uh, plasma 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 interactions field mm -hmm. interactions okay well it sounds like a lot of interactions going on there um, yeah so you've have you plugged oh you just finished it so you wouldn't have plugged it in yet or anything I guess yeah it's plugged in right now that's what that's what this light is oh, I see okay lighten that up <laughs> So, the idea of the Mike's son about this uh, AI that can come in through our plasma reactors and interact with us. I know Cosell talked about it, but uh, Mike claims that they can get in through the Keshi reactors too. So, by putting the multiple wire strips and give them twisting them up and it's a random twist just to the, however your electric drill twists them and how how you want to hold it that uh, provides uh security so, so people can't break uh, you know so you know this ai or other people out in the plasma can't break in through your reactor and and, and talk to you <laughs> i guess or that, you. that prevents that from happening is that what you're saying with uh, the the uh... that's, that's that's Mike Siri yep I see. that's what he's telling so okay well it seems like a handy thing to know <laughs> I hate it when so, those uh, evil entities uh, enter into me and so on but yeah, yeah so mm. I, anyway yeah that's uh, I think I prefer these I, these ones are just as easy to build as the Q6s that Cosell has. But uh, I think these offer a bit better security and stuff. So I think uh, right now this is my reactor of choice for building, but mm -hmm. that can change. <laughs> right on. So what do you hope to, what do you expect to uh, get out of this in the next while, let's say? If anything, um, uh, do you have any well, expectations? This is, this is a just power wait? reactor. Um, you still got one in one of my reactors downstairs that's got clockwise coils on it and stuff. I might replace that one, or I'm thinking maybe I'll build uh, build f uh, four of these and put them in a starship uh, formation, see what happens. Mm -hmm. I gave two of my Q6s to my mom and dad, but uh, uh, my mom and dad are all religious, and when I showed them how you could talk to, to talk to your coils or whatever they they got worried about like devil was going to get back to them and stuff so uh, yeah yeah probably got to give them two of these that got something you want to leave, leave out of those family <laughs> conversations <laughs> so, huh. 
they don't know too much about the plasma and stuff there, so <laughs> I get uh, swayed by this devil stuff. My brother-in-law's a pastor, and he's a extra. He gets he can take the devil out of people and stuff. So I, well, it's a it's a concern that uh, many people do have, and it's something that needs to be addressed in some way or another. Um, if we can continue to look at the topic as scientifically as we can, that's probably an advantage. But um, it's a difficult uh, topic, and it has been for the last several millennia. <laughs> yeah. That's why. So, that's I had why, a few yeah. questions on this. Uh, number one, uh, just these plasma interactions uh, with the wires going back and forth or whatever. Uh, I don't really recall Dr. Kesh talking too much about plasma inter interactions in that way and whether they're good or bad or whatever. If, any comments? What do you mean plasma interactions in which way? With the, well, between the, you're talking about okay. between the wires? Okay. Or? Let me back up a bit then. In the, in the plasma capacitor, the energy comes in one wire, goes through the capacitor, turns around, goes back through the other way. So one way it's going through magnetical and it turns around, it's going back gravitational and turns around going magnetical and goes back gravitational and out on, on this quad one mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's what I, that's what I mean by by plasma interactions it, uh, the going back and forth and switching from uh, sort of gravitational to magnetical yeah I'm not sure Kesh was uh, was never a fan of twisting all the wires together he was pretty much against that that it would uh, cut the plasmatic field in to many pieces basically rather than one continuous uh, um, unit so but Mike is of a different uh, and, and many others are of a different bent that way in, in terms of uh, you know creating the bends deliberately to uh, as a, a, a way to direct the plasma I guess and, and so <coughs> and perhaps even multiply it so how do you see that? How do you see uh, the twisting um, working into uh, the equation? Well, right now you, you can see see my uh, it's just, turns red about three four inches away. Mike had one of these in his uh, workshop where he was getting it uh, turning red six feet away. So it you know it looked like it was a pretty powerful. Uh, um, Device that he had, but I don't know. He he might have had it loaded up with uh, 1500 watts or something, mm -hmm. uh, or to get that kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. If that's supposed to affect the, if, uh, you know, the field strength for the magnetic fields that we're detecting with those little detectors. Right now, I got nothing on it, so I don't have even have the light turned on. So, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that's that's. Uh, okay. Well, thank you for the. So, uh, we don't have really have. Well, I guess there is some coils wrapped around these capacitors, but uh, but really the fields are going back and forth through that core wire, and uh, and I'm I'm thinking probably the magnetic field come that I'm detecting coming off there must be coming from the core wire. I'm not sure whether it's coming off these other wires, you know, the little coils around it or not, but. <coughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a, sometimes a, a coil will contain the field within it and so the field doesn't get outside the coil basically so, and, and you know there's different ways of looking at that I guess Plasmatic. Yeah, the, yeah and Mike thinks that if we get 360 of these built that that'll form a whole dome around the whole earth and protect the earth from whoever wants to get in <laughs> So, whether that's true or not, we'll you know, find out, I guess, if we ever get that many built. <laughs> I think um, a... Another comment Mike was making was that the, the wire size on these things doesn't matter whatsoever. So, you, you, like this unit here, he was uh, he uh, recommended using 18-gauge wire, so that's what I used here. Um, and it's, you know, and it's used for a house, uh, house power unit, so, but it, you know, from what uh, Mr. Cash has been telling us, uh, you'd normally go 14 gauge wire for a house power unit. So, 
I just wondered what people's comments were for when they say wire size doesn't matter for, for plasma flow. Because yeah, it's if my it works purely so on, if it the larger works. the diameter wire, the more you know circumference of nano coated material you got there for the plasma to flow through. So I would think the larger wire you can get more plasma flowing through it. But maybe that's being such a superconductor, maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. Right, that's probably true, and uh, um, it might be a case of if it's not working as a superconductor and it's working on the matter level. Then, if you have 18 gauge, it could melt. Where 14 or 14 gauge could uh, could transfer the amperage on the matter level without melting the wire. So that's um, one aspect. Um, if you plug in, mm -hmm. hello. Can I ask you a question. Sure. Um, Who's that? You know, uh, Zane. My, my name is Zane. Okay. Hi. Zane. Lott. Hi. Um, uh, I've, I've been, I'm, I've been making my gains and I, I've been observing them as much as I can because I really want to understand them, you know, and, uh, last week, beginning of last week, I started a batch and, um, they were going pretty good. And then I added some hydrogen peroxide, uh, 90%, the food grade stuff. Well, it's food grade 30, 35%, but it's actually like 90% hydrogen peroxide. And um, and it seemed to to turn all the gans into like fat. And um, I got, I got um, I can show you something in just a minute. Let me stir this up, and then let it settle a little bit. Okay, just a second, uh, Zane. Uh, Lee, are you pretty much done there with your demo for today, or do you have more you wanted to present there? I got another topic for later, but uh, okay. I was just uh, wondering if there's any questions or, or comments on, on my unit. I'm pretty well finished. For All right, then we can. Hey, brother, I'm I'm building one of those myself right now, and I don't know how to wire it up. As I've had it, I've had it unfinished for about three weeks now, and it, it it's kind of disturbing me, you know. Okay, uh, th th he's got some new videos out on his uh, YouTube channel. Mike Nashif, uh, search Mike Nashif, and that's the name of his YouTube channel. They just came out uh, about a week ago, and he, he uh, goes into detail on how to wire this thing up again. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, thanks, Lee. That's good info. Uh, anybody else with, with uh, any questions for Lee? I have to check the live stream. I don't have that open here, so let me just get into that. Hi, everybody. This is Mark from uh, Detroit. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Good. I have a Lee for uh, a question for Lee. Okay. Shoot. Hi, hi Lee. Uh, I, you know, I watched you forever and a day, and we, you know, with your nano coating and everything, um, <clears throat> I had one question for you. You know, when you uh, made your big batches of uh, na um, nano coating and... Um, your plates for your uh, gants. Yep. When did you wash them, and how many times did you wash them in between taking up taking them out of your five and putting them, you know, like to make the plates for nano coating? Um, I understand now that um, you should wash them every time because of the caustic. You don't want to keep the caustic on the on the um, uh, plates or I'm, I'm using pipes, but whatever. How yeah, many my, okay. My, my plates are made out of copper pipe, which I, I yes, I yes. You cut them and beat them. them and I did. The same. Yes. I, yeah. I, yep. I did the same thing, but I'm changing yeah. my system because I wanted a little bit more room now and I didn't want to cut them and it was a lot of work, but anyway, yeah. I just was wondering, um, the washing part of the, yeah. Nano, okay. nano coating. Yeah, so I then I got a big five gallon bucket that I nano coat in. I, they start off in the bottom layer and get in the in the liquid in the bottom. Yes. And then they go up in a series of racks as yes. they each time and get steamed. 
Yes. And then as soon as they come out of the top of the bucket, I go and just uh, rinse them real good under the tap and then oh. let them dry. Oh, you do you, you once you just steam them and let them steam in your um, your little cooker like you had and um the the caustic was on the plates for 24 hours then you took them out and washed them under tap water no i just uh <coughs> like my, my bucket set up that they, they start off in the liquid and then they get steamed in the on the first rack above yeah and then they get steamed a second time a third time and a fourth time yes. and then the next time they're out the top of the bucket and then then i wash them i wash them right at the end oh at the very end yeah oh okay I'm washing them every time. <laughs> Shouldn't hurt, I don't think. I don't know. I'm trying a different process this time, and I'm I'm totally out in because you know how Kesh says try different things, and I've tried. You know, I watched you right from the very beginning. I took the copper and cut it in half and pounded it and <laughs> steamed it and stacked it and steamed it and you know bathed it in the caustic. This time, I tried a different. Um, I'm trying a, a whole different um, direction, you might say. So what I, I you know, I, I don't know. I have some pictures on my Facebook where I bought a, a big roasting pan that will take the water, the temperature of, of it's a, it's a big pan. Here, let me put, my, I, I don't, I don't like to talk without being able to be people seeing what I'm saying. I use my hands a lot. Hi, everybody. So I bought a roasting pan at the um, at the flea market. It's a big roasting pan. It, it'll take the uh, the temperature up. You know, the knob says 500. But now that I'm dipping it in there with the caustic in the pan, um, it only takes the water up to boiling point, which is about 200 degrees. So I took um, my um, I'm, I'm starting right from the beginning. So I took my I'm trying to build nano coats. So I don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm, I'm just asking for suggestions or maybe I'm doing it wrong or maybe you can tell me if I'm doing it right. But I, I have, I, I, right off the bat, I want to tell everybody when you heat that uh, caustic, pure caustic, pure, pure lye with water in that roasting pan, um, there's fumes that are coming up. So you don't want to breathe that at all. So I, I wear uh, a gas mask. Um, uh, C3, uh, you know, uh, organic gas mask. So at least I'm helping myself a little, keep myself covered with my gloves and everything. And it's hot. These pipes are hot now. When I'm coming out of the water, it's 200 degrees. And I'm dipping it in uh, ice cold water that I've been keeping in my refrigerator. And I've been doing this now for about, I've done it, the process now for at least five times. I've done, this is the fifth time, tonight's the fifth time. And each time I keep looking in the pure water that I'm dipping it in from hot to cold caustic. It's all pure caustic in filtered water with just pure lye in the water and it heats up. I put the pipes in, I got it all laid out real nice. And I just, it's absolutely cold when I start and I turn the thing on and it, I let it cook up for about two hours and it just cooks and it boils. And then at the boiling point, I say, well, how much more can you get out of it? So that I, I shut it off and it, I have my gloves on. It's hotter than I, I can. I put my hand in there, grab one, put it in the cold water as fast as I can. The water was in my refrigerator. So I know the water temperature is like 38 degrees, 34 degrees when I start. So I'm trying to keep a log of everything that I'm doing, and I'm just saying the nano coating is just really pretty. And I'm, and if John's on the line, <clears throat> I know he nano coats by putting in caustic in a bag. And I'm just asking John now, <clears throat> with a little tech support, what he thinks about my process. If I've explained it to where he can kind of comprehend it, or Rick, or anybody that you know, can kind of comment on what I'm doing. Well, what's the thinking behind dunking it in the cold water? That's a question I ask myself. I don't even know, but I, I learned back uh, in, like I told you last week, Cash told us to go from hot to cold real fast. So I don't know. 
And that and was that was uh, an old old explanation of a fire process. Yes, and, and, and I'm just trying to take uh, processes from that because he didn't say that just because for no reason. Well, there's lots and lots of people that are mixing these things up together and they're not getting anything out of it. Um, I'm not saying don't mix it. I'm just saying, think about what you're doing. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to freeze that in that state? My, um, okay. Looking at it from a metallurgical point of view, when you heat up a piece of metal, you shift all of the molecular or the atomic structure of the metal. It, it relaxes and it all form, it all homogenizes becomes a nice smooth even when it's hot uh, well when it's hot yes yes okay. particularly i'm thinking particularly like when you're hardening steel okay when well, you bring the steel up to 1380 degrees the carbon melts works its way all through the atomic structure and then you freeze it either in oil water or air depending upon the kind of steel you have and it it locks that carbon into place now, I would, I would imagine a very similar thing happening with what you're doing when you have the, the high heat, the atomic structure, the popcorn that we're making on the surface of the, the material is going to be nice and loose and fluffy and floating around and just barely hanging on. But when you freeze it, you're going to lock it. Now, I, I can't say whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. But... From what I understand about what we're doing with the nano coating, we want as loose a structure as we can get. We want the largest, puffiest popcorn we can have. So freezing uh, may be detrimental to what you're what you're after. I mean, a, a slightly smaller structure is going to have a slightly limited bandwidth in the plasma. Okay, um, it's a finer filter for lack of a better example. Now, with an energy system, probably won't matter. With a health system, you're going to want as wide, a broad a bandwidth as you can get. This is why uh, fire coating doesn't seem to work very well for health systems because the fire coating is a very fine, very s small structure, very fine filter. Whereas the caustic coating, when you look at it under the electron microscope, it's a very coarse it's like the difference between 400 grit and 40 grit sandpaper. Mm -hmm. So I'm making 40 grit? No, you're making 400. Well, no, you're probably making about a 240 because you're, you're starting off with a really coarse structure and right. then you're freezing it, you're contracting it really fast, really hard. So you're locking, if, if, there, if there's any stresses, um, again, I got to look at this from a matter state metallurgical point of view. That's what I'm trying to do. When you, when, when you freeze it, you're going to lock any stress that you put into that structure into place. Where would the stress be, though? You know, the, stress, I'm the stress would be within the interaction between the individual atomic fields. If they're not evenly spaced, evenly configured, when, they, when, when you freeze it and they lock into place, there's going to be some of them in there that aren't quite in the right spot. If they can relax gently cool off slowly they can shift and adjust and move a little bit now uh, again um, you know I'm, I'm probably not looking at this from the right point of view but that's what's coming into my head when i think about the problem that's my Yep, exactly, and and this is why I asked. This is why I asked why was you know what you're thinking is if you're if you're doing it for a specific purpose, then yeah, it probably there's probably is a very specific purpose to do. Well, like I said, I'm not I'm not trying to uh, create. I'm just doing what I feel is right. Okay, uh -huh. so, that's fine. That's fine. You know I'm saying uh, uh, we're all supposed to create stuff. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to be outside the box. We're not, everything we do is not wrong. So mm -hmm. my thinking on this was um, if I stop the, the cooking process quickly, like you said, everything that is happening will freeze in, at that process. So each time I do it several times, like Rick said, there'll be 
it will be imperfect, but there'll be channels probably for it to f- energy to flow through because boom, it's not. Boom, cool. it's not. I don't know. The, I'm just. That's, yeah, that's. Yes, yes, yes. Wouldn't that tell us that uh, uh, copper is uh, made in layers then? Because well, what I'm thinking when I, you know, when I was looking at that the first time, uh, what came to my mind was there's a difference in the thermal expansion coefficient between the, the nanomaterials and the elemental copper. And if, it, if you have two materials, dissimilar materials with different thermal coefficient properties and you adjust their temperatures over a drastic period, in a, or, or a drastic temperature change over a short period, they're going to delaminate. They, they can't stay together. Um, this is how a, like, uh, the, the bimetal strip in your thermostat works. But they, they have very close thermal uh, expansion properties in two strips of metal, one side by side. One heats up and expands a little bit more than the other, so the spring straightens out a little bit or curls up a little bit, depending upon which side it's on. And I got a. I have a strong feeling this is what's happening with the fire method. When you're when you're heating and cooling with the fire method, is the copper is cooling too fast, and it's pulling itself away from the nano coating. I almost had that happen when I was just caustic coating because it was so uneven that it seemed like it was drying or either um, it was uneven. But this way that I'm doing it now. Each time I look at it, it's 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 completely even, and I would be I have my stuff out in my garage, but um, I'd be I, I could run out there and go show you a couple. But the you know like when you showed that you um, when you put the little pieces in the bag and you put a um, caustic in it for a little while, how nice and black and even it is. Mm-hmm. These are the, these look the same way to me. Whereas are they was, are they a shiny black? No, they're a dull black. Okay, because the the best coating that I've created, I've only done it a couple of times, and and I don't know exactly why it happened. But when I look at the piece, I put the gloves on and I pick it up and I hold it in my hand. It looks like a hole in reality. There's no shine. There's no reflection. It no. doesn't reflect any energy. It looks like there's. A, I'm holding a hole. And um, that's, that's the kind of coating that I'm looking for because I want it to absorb as much energy as possible. Again, that would be for a specific purpose. It, you wouldn't use that kind of coating for all applications. Well, no, this is just my beginning application. This is the base. I'm at a base point, and this is, this is the starting point for me. I got rid of all my stuff. And the way that this looks now to me because what the, the, I could just kind of tell you my step by step now, because I've been doing it for the last five days, is I've heat I, I heat this up to the, 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 the to the temperature. I dip it in the water, the ice cold water. I put it in the cooler, and then uh, I have a cooler that has wires, and I I, um, I use my um, uh, uh, meter to. Um, uh, discharge everything, but I have it so that everything lays on top and I have a discharge on the bottom so that I know that everything's going from top to bottom. And then once I do that in the more in, you know, I let it discharge all 
Well, I'm done at 11, so I let it discharge from 11 till 6 in the morning for about five and a half hours, six hours. And then I take the top off the cooler and I set it outside in the sunlight to let the uh, nano coating dry and absorb the sunlight. And then when I bring it back in the house after the eight hours of drying, when I get back home, uh, I bring it back in and I discharge again. It won't discharge anymore. It stays there about, well, when you put the, my, my electric meter on um, 200 millivolts, it stays at about 48 to 50.1, 48, 50.2. You know, it stays in that range. It won't go down and won't go up. It's not negative anymore. It just stays right there. I don't know what that means either. I can take pictures right now, and it's still sitting right now from today at about 48, 49. Okay. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna we're gonna find out in how it does GANS and how long it lasts in your solution, because um, that's that was the big issue that a lot of people were having was uh, if you didn't get a really robust coating and you didn't get it with the parameters just right, the coating just came off. It only lasted a couple of days, and then you're down to copper and it doesn't work anymore. So right. I guess it's over the next two three weeks we'll find out how your coating does in uh, in actual practice. Thank you, John. Just a comment, uh, you know, a year ago we were doing this discharge stuff with the voltmeter and and then it got changed to where now we're uh, using the voltage in the ohm setting to align our nano coatings. We're not discharging them anymore. At least that's my understanding. That's what I'm doing. So I have no yeah. idea where that came from. Which? Uh, adding voltage to it. Um, when you when you put the meter on and you discharge, you pull the ions out. What I see occurring within the structure is the individual ions are are being dragged through the magnetic gravitational fields, and they create a tunnel through your your nano coating, which creates a plasmatic conduit within the coating and allows the, the plasma to flow through that conduit. Adding electricity, uh, you're just adding ions. You're gonna you're gonna create more ionization within your system, which is gonna be a more random um, magrav field interaction within the structure of that coating. Well, the idea the idea was you're you're when you make your coils, you're supposed to have a positive negative end on your coil, and then when you run the power through it, you gotta hook it up the right direction to get the flow through the coil and align it in the in that direction. Yes, but you're not um, adding electricity. You're the coils already have a polarity. And yeah. you, wanna, you yeah, have a just, specific, just by training them, you're not getting a, you're not getting lining them in the direction. That, well, that yeah, the electrons are going to go from the negative side to the positive side because they're negatively charged, so they're going to be attracted to the positive end. Um, the whole point of doing the coils was to create a longitudinal path through the coil, through the structure of that nano coating along the length of that coil, to give the plasma the idea of where you want it to go. So, um, so you're saying we got to measure the bare copper wire, find out what the what the positive end is, then no. coil our coils, and then nano coat them, and then when you drain them, it automatically flows in the right direction because you've set the direction or you've found out what the natural direction is at the start. No, or, no, 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 no. My, my 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 the way I'm doing it is I'm I'm giving it a positive negative. I twist one end of the wire over, and then after it comes out of each seaming. I, I, you know, the red lead goes to the twisted end, the other black lead goes to the other end. So it's always being, being, uh, always got the, the ions or whatever, the, the electrons flowing uh, in that same direction. It's kind of, you're, what, what's going on right now with all of that is kind of like trying to build a house with a gardening book. Um, <laughs> Your the the coils have a direction. Okay, you've got a magnetical side, you've got a gravitational or a magnetical end. You've got a gravitational end. The gravitational end is the input. The, gra the magnetical end is the output. This is why they use positive and negative. Um, the negative is your input. That's where it comes from. The positive is the output. That's where it goes. And when you put the meter on it, because the meter is polarized, it, it's most meters have a protection diode in there that won't allow the won't allow reverse current. Some of the newer ones you can you can run a reverse bias on them and it doesn't really matter. But 
they work better in the positive bias. So you put your meter on there. And if you put your meter on the correct way with a volt meter setting, so you're not adding energy to the system, the whatever ionization is in there, whatever charge is in those coils is going to flow into the meter and make that pathway through your system. If you put your voltmeter on the home scale, which is a volt and a half, usually, um, you're going to be adding ionization to your coils, which in my mind actually is going to interrupt that plasma flow because it's going to it's going to create a much more of a random pattern within the uh, within the nano structure. Yeah. Yeah, the whole point of putting the meter on there is to drain the ionization out of the nano coating. Yeah, I also believe it. It is is it not aligning, you know, the nano layers? Uh, to some extent, yes. I mean, I, I I see it as two different processes. When you when when you when you're draining the the nano layers, um, when you're nano coating, that's what you're doing. You're doing a different process when you're actually aligning the coils, putting the meter on it. It may be using the same process, but they're for different reasons, is my you understanding. Gotta, you got to keep in mind that the ancients did this and they didn't have voltmeters. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, true enough, true enough. Um, but, yeah, I just see it as an alignment process. And as you say, the, the, polarity, the polarity on the coils through the plans, it's, it's not electrical, it's just a... It's just a it's a way of determining direction. You can yes, just right. as easily do it with in and out. Yeah, you know, that's exactly what it, about it. Yeah. That's exactly what that polarity is. It's in and out. It's not positive, yeah. negative like the ends of a battery. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah, exactly. In electronics, when you deal with um coils, you, you know, there's a they use a spot to identify which is the inside the incoming, outgoing, that sort of thing. It's the same thing. It's just using plus plus and neg. And and a lot of people confuse that with it actually being a, you know, about power, but it's not. It's a, yeah. Yeah, there's been a couple of things that came out in the teachings that that wound up confusing people that way, and it was actually explained why in the teachings, but a lot of people missed it, and that's that's all it was for. Is it's one's in, one's out. That's you don't have to get any more complicated than that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Excuse me, Rick, do you know you're not recording on Zoom? Oh, I forgot to remind him. Yeah. Well, we got the live stream. That's that's better. okay. Sorry. Okay, what else have we got here to show and tell today? Well, you got a unit running. I got a unit running. Um, I can actually hold my hand about two inches above the, the, the top of my MagRev unit. And I can feel the fields. It feels like a, how do I describe it? Um, it's like a pulsing feather. It's the strangest feeling I've ever, I've ever felt in my life, but it's, it's there. I can actually perceive it with, the, the, with my fingers. Yeah. Does it feel like it was when, when you put the uh, spirals in your shoes? No. More no. or less? Totally different. Totally different. Completely okay. different feeling. Better or worse? Uh, 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 is an orange better than an apple? Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> Don't start that fight. <laughs> let's, okay. let's take a look at and it. And then the banana people get involved. Oh, geez. <laughs> what a mess. Fruit salad all over the place. Um, yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> that's a good comparison, though. Well, I mean, better. How, do you, how do you describe it? I mean, you can't, it's not, there is no better. It's just different. And uh, um, I, 
I don't know. I can't even put it into words. You know, some of my experiments that I'm doing right now with the, the health pens and GANs, I want to see if I can get the health pens to actually manipulate the GANs in a little jar of water. And uh, it doesn't seem to be working. I've got a little jar of GAN sitting on top of my MagGrav unit. And it seems to be trying to climb up the sides of the jar a little bit. But I'm not seeing the, the, the um, extreme reaction, reaction that I would have expected. Um, I was going to ask you, John, what, sort of ex what are you expecting? What, what are you aiming for? Uh, actual articulate motion within the GANs that I can right. set my video camera on and film. Yeah, I've had a hard time getting the GANs to dance as well. Um, but, you know, I've uh, discovered what might be a secret in the last couple of weeks here. And uh, let me relay that. I'll, let me go grab my uh, secret jar. I'll be right back. Ooh, secret jars. We like secrets. Hydrogen peroxide. Um, I don't know. Maybe my lead GANs is too close to the whole thing and it's just sucking it all up. Um, I don't know. But I've got a I've got a two ball reactor on ping pong ball fans running. Um, I got to run it twenty four seven because it's actually helping to cool my computer. And uh, um, but it's it's just running. I haven't noticed any effect from that. I don't see any spinning lights or visual distortions or anything like that. Um, I've got a health pen with the three big Ganses sitting around the outside of it, pointed straight up with a little jar of CO two Gans sitting on top of it. Uh, hoping that I can absorb some of the plasma from the interaction of the three big three into the health pen and di divert it straight up through the CO2 GANs on top. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, what else have I got going? Um, well, the MagGrav system is running my computer and my sound system. And uh, when I plugged it in, one thing I noticed, Rick, this, you might uh, uh, be able to give some insight or at least have a little uh, um, parallel with this. The my monitors, I have two monitors. Um, I've got two mixers, um, audio mixers. One's running my microphone, one's running the output sound. And the computer was off when I plugged it in. But the monitors, the mixer, uh, my internet uh, modem was on. The mixers were on. And it was all, everything came on like a soft start. It wasn't, you know, like, you know, when the, when the power comes on after the power is out, everything just goes pop and it lights right up. Well, this, this kind of, it was a gentle, it took a second, second and a half for everything to kind of power up when I first plugged it in, which was a very interesting effect. And I, I haven't unplugged it to see if I could reproduce it, hmm. but uh, I don't know if anybody else had noticed something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, any other comments about that particular aspect? Uh, I have, have noticed effects like that. Um, yeah, it's hard to sort of pin it down, but yeah, um, I, I found I found that my lighting seemed to be softer. Okay, well, being an, a, a, an audio engineer for many, many years, um, one of the things that I used to do, um, I'm very sensitive when people turn amps on and plug guitars in and stuff, turn the volume down so you don't have that pop. And that's what I was expecting out of the mixers because I got a 320 watt per side mixer running through a pair of Altex. And then when it pops, it's loud in here. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to turn the volumes down when I plugged it in. And I realized, wait a minute, there was no pop. This was a really nice soft start, which surprised me. I was not expecting that at all. Have you done any voltage checks on your line voltages? Um, well, I tested the line voltage. I'm at about two nine or about 119 volts here, mm -hmm. typically. But this house is built in like the 30s. It's really old. I don't even have a ground in the living room, so my mag grab is not grounded. Yeah, um, it'd be fun to do voltage checks right at the mag grab, like the in and out of the uh, mag grab, and see uh, um, when when things start up. Is there a voltage drop, or is there a voltage increase maybe from the uh, a surge from the plasma who knows yes right on my power bar but the little neon light i've got a um a noma high pro one of the big yellow power bars with the breaker on it a little uh, neon light right neon lights it's lighting up. It's flickering a little bit, as you would expect, but it's uh, it's running normally. So I'm the voltage is up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I can't say exactly it's 120 volts, but it's 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 over 90 volts because those neon lights don't light up uh, below 90 volts. Right. Yep. Interesting. Well, yeah, I had I had a neon hugged up, hooked up to my system for quite a while, and uh, it it seemed like the neon was very very sort of soft and fuzzy, with compared to just how they normally are. I, I mean, I use them all the time to sort of know what they look like. Okay. Um, Sort of taken it out more recently because so I thought it might have been interfering, but um, yeah, that there there is something there. Yeah, um, another thing, my computer does run all really cool. It's running at uh, seventy-seven degrees right now, and it's about seventy-two in the house. Um, so it's and it's this is a big monster eight-core, lots of memory, um, massive monster system. It should run hot, but it, it doesn't run hot anymore. Have you nano coated it inside or something? Or well, you, it's been running for what, what how long has it been running? A um, couple of weeks. It's just the uh, it's just being plugged into the Magrav. You think makes it run cooler? Is that is that the idea? Well, it's it it. I, I was was having with problems with it overheating. If I was running, you know, two of the cores were running at forty percent. The the temperature climbed and the alarms went off and it was all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And now it's it rarely hits ninety degrees anymore at all. Yeah. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. Interesting. That's uh, that could be a, a major item if it ends up that computers run cooler <laughs> off the Magrav. I mean, look how much Apple, Microsoft, and others in these huge server farms are paying for power, and now they're mm -hmm. uh, well. Actually, now they're not paying. The, the people pay them for power now because Apple started their own power system using solar power and now they power their server farm with their solar system and for I just saw a news item a couple of days ago where they're actually selling power back to the grid now they have extra power left over from their server farm so yeah. that's interesting um, yeah um, but the noise the noise on my amplifiers um, hasn't changed it's still I still have the the background noise on my amplifiers because nothing's grounded and I have a ground loop between my computer and my uh, my mixer so I you know I've always got that sort of a weird pulsating whine computer mm -hmm. noise coming through the speakers but it's it's very very low mm -hmm. um, I don't know I'm I'm half thinking of running a big long ugly extension cord I've got a newer circuit in the kitchen on the far side of the house which actually has a ground in it mm -hmm. And I'm seriously thinking running a big long extension cord and then plugging the system in so I have a, a decent ground on this. Won't work though because then you'll have a ground loop circuit that's created from that extension cord and it'll act like <laughs> a giant antenna pulling in every local radio station into your uh, computer. Yeah. Um, let's get back for a minute. Uh, you were mentioning putting, a, um, I guess, a health pen or, or a pain pen inside of uh gans uh a, a, a container of gans i've got three bottles of gans uh the big three copper oxide uh, uh ch3 and nice you can't see the co2 but it's around the back mm -hmm. with the pen sitting in in the, the focal point of those three uh the little plastic cap on the top is just because the end of my pens are are up uh, you know they're pointed Oh, that is yeah. the pen itself. That whole central column is that what you're saying? That's the wood. That's the wood oh, okay. pen. Yeah. Yeah. I showed you guys before. Okay. How did you get it to stand up on its end? Is it pointy? It's just one end is one end is flat. Um, the one oh. down there with the ball on it, the 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 guts inside were too long, so I couldn't put the little cap on the end. Mm -hmm. But the you see the 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 radius end is the top of this. The radius is inside oh, that okay. white plastic piece. Okay. And that's just a bushing. Just to, there's there's nothing inside it. It's straight, clear air through. Okay. And then so, a little tiny bottle of CO two gan sitting on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I want you know I was hoping I'd get a I little see. fountain or something in there, and and because that would be really really cool to see. Okay, so you're trying to get the little CO two thing on the top to react to the fields in the pan. Is that yeah, or, or the other ones yeah. even? I see. That's what I was okay. aiming for. And I mean, I've got, I've got another bottle of CO2 there. Um, I've got my two fan reactors running, sitting over there. And on this side of the house, sitting on top of the Maggrav system, there's another bottle of uh, CH3 GANs. 
Okay, well, let me, let me um, expound a little bit on an idea that I came across this week in regards to that. Okay, so here's the deal. I was uh, playing around with uh, CO2 GANs, and I thought, well, what would happen if I took this clear um, uh, soap, you know, it's soap in a bottle, you for your hands, and it happens to be... Uh, uh, unscented, uh, allergy tested, and hypoallergenic, and so on, because I have sensitive skin. But it's nice, clear, plain, simple soap, non perfumed, and so on. All right, well, I put some CO2 GANs in it, and it ended up looking like this. Mm -hmm. And it does not settle out. Over days, it just stays exactly the same. Okay? And let me just show you in comparison clear versus cloudy like CO2 GANs when you shake it up. I thought, well, that's interesting. It doesn't seem to settle out. And then I took some water, a liter of distilled water, and um, I put um, a few drops of that GAN soap in it. And it just gave it a gentle stirring. And this is several days later. The GANs has not settled on the bottom at all. And it seems to be fully dissipated, evenly dissipated, I might add, in this jar. When I first dropped in this soap, it went down sort of sort of as a little cloud and sort of and then it hit the bottom. <clears throat> it actually went down pretty fast, hit the bottom, and then it started melting a bit and it sort of started swirling like a little uh, uh, dust cloud inside there. And then when I stirred it up, it just instantly, well not instantly, it, it actually hung out in the bottom for a while. I came back later and the whole thing was just evenly dissipated and dispersed. And I thought, well, that's quite interesting. And the way I find that interesting is uh, the soap gives, gives one a means of controlling the space between the GANs particles, between each um, atomic sized or maybe you know a few uh, atom, a few uh, chunks or a few molecules of the GANs material, you know you're shooting for monatomic or monomolecular um, composition. And generally the GANs is not that way because if we can see it, then it's not nano. Basically, it's uh, it's already you know we see chunks of GANs. Sometimes you see big flakes floating around unless you shake it up really good at the CO2 GANs, and there, that's an, a, a conglomeration or a, a amalgamate of uh, or not amalgamate uh, aggregate is the word of um, many of the GANs molecules sticking together in clumps. Clumping is what happens. In the and so it all clumps and goes right down to the bottom normally, which is convenient for many purposes. But what I'm proposing is this is a means of dispersing those possibly monomolecular um, um, sized nanoparticles in a more even and complete way, so that each of these particles in here are. Are uh, repelled from each other. They're they're all maintaining their position from each other. They don't want to all clump together and uh, stick to each other. They want to have their their own positioning, you might say. So we can control that positioning by simply the concentration of GANs. If I put twice as much GANs in there, they would be twice as close together as what they are now. I'm thinking, wow. Well, that's pretty cool because it turns out that in nanotechnology <clears throat> quite often the gap between these particles is more important than the particles themselves you might say so mm -hmm. if we can arrange the gap for the exact gap that we need for certain processes bingo I think that this would be a way of doing it just putting a couple of drops of soap might be enough to disperse the particles in an even way and then we've got that spacing that we need and then maybe this can turn into a solar battery or a, you know a supercapacitor or who knows what 
because we have that spacing. No longer we do we have the clumping. Now, <clears throat> why, is, why I brought this up, why it clicked with me now is when you mention the pen, <coughs> what if we had this kind of um, material <coughs> rather than it all stuck at the bottom when we're trying to, what if we stuck the pen inside here? Would we be able to see the fields, um, you know, uh, um, positioning themselves from the fields of the pen, the fields of the GANs and the fields of the pen, maybe they would interact more easily because now this all this water is like the plasma of the GANs, whereas before it was GANs at the bottom and some GANs water at the top, but they weren't mixing. They weren't, the, the energy of the GANs was not, you know, the GANs water is not the same as the GANs itself. This is a mixture of both and evenly dispersed. So I'm thinking that it might be a way Gans? of it. Pardon me? CO2? Yeah, this is CO2 uh, GANs I use. There's only a few drops of GANs in here. And it won't settle out. It's been this way for days, and I suspect it will stay that way forever, basically. Do you think it was the amino acids from the soap that makes it dispersed like that? Um, I'm not sure if it's amino acids or what it would. Be. I mean, soap has um, it has a, a dispersing effect. It makes water wetter, as they say, and it yes. uh, it can actually well, it breaks, that breaks the surface tension of the water. One end of the soap molecule likes the water molecule. The other end of the soap molecules likes oil. Um, that's the whole point of having soap is that it, it'll emulsify any oils that are in there. So I'm kind of thinking that your GANs particles are are um, held in suspension through this uh, a similar process. Through you know, fat, end of fat. that GANs molecule stuck to the oil side of the of the soap molecule. Fat, the fat process, or the amino acid, which is the fat process. Wouldn't that be the amino acid that's in the fat that you put from the soap that was made? from the, the amino acids from the soap, which is a fatty acid, now you dropped it into that solution, and now they're, like he said, like John said, it's separating like oil and water. They won't stay together, they, they blast out. So now what you have in that jar, or that jar is, um, yes, it's, it, it's, it's all energized. So you could probably, if you, do you think if you put that in another container and put water on top of it and made plasma, plasmatic water, would you think water or the plasma would build on top of it? Or do you think it would disperse if you added more, more well, volume? That's the thing. I, I have to do some experiments to find out, like, for example, what is the minimum amount of, uh, this soap, which all, this is not pure GANs, this is maybe 5% uh, GANs and the rest is soap. And it's only a couple of drops of that that's gone into this to cause the uh, the dispersal. Well, <clears throat> so did, did Mr. Kesh just say little, that uh, uh, four times 400, or um, the multiply, the, we, we're not multiply, the multiplications of, of the GAN, uh, the plasma, from GANs to plasma makes things exponential. Yes, exactly. Let me uh, go get a, a container. Let me try that. Hmm. Uh, I'm just envisioning a molecule of water, uh, one soap chain with a molecule of the GANs on the other end. And that would make a stable a stable molecular system, which isn't going to want to interact with anything else, and it's just going to remain in suspension. So I don't it's basically know. Basically, being held up like a hot air balloon would in the uh, air, something like that. No, not really. It's 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 I, it, it's like trying to take the sugar out of a cake after it's baked. Um, you know. Find out right now. It's, it's experiment one on one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Rick's lab. Yay. Uh, yeah, in the moment experiments. I got this beautiful uh, flask today at the dollar store. Actually. 
He's got all the cool tools. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll take, um, so I've got distilled water, just a little piece of something in there, bug gun in, however I've got amino acids in there. Um, this is distilled water, it's probably close to a liter or so. <clears throat> I'll take, um, uh, let's say, maybe a milliliter out of this. About a milliliter. Now let me just drop it into this, and uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see too much there. Maybe if I change the lighting a little differently, it might help. That's perfect. That's perfect. Something like that. And let's just see. I'll just put a. I'll just start with a drop, and I'll <clears throat> kind of tell you what happens at the same time. I should have my different little uh, camera set up. Let me just put a drop in and see what happens. Whoops, it's more than a drop. It looks like it stayed in a drop and fell to the bottom. See it. Oh, yeah, it starts dissipating immediately when I drop okay. these in. Yeah. It does sort of work its way to the bottom, but it's also. Okay, there's about a milliliter. Oh, it's staying as kind of little clouds inside the water. You yeah, see, it's see the circulation. Um, Arnold, if you're trying to talk, you're really quiet. Huh? What was that? Oh, it just sounded like Armin was trying to talk, and he's really, I could just barely hear him. Oh, okay. It's far away. How about now? That's better. Uh, that's good. Hi, Armin. Hello, okay, so I can't see any uh, difference in the in the water with one milliliter. So let me try putting like five in and see. What do you want to do? Oh, we're just playing. <laughs> the idea, uh, what the 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 concept Rick was was to organize the um, GANS particulates, whether they're molecular, or atomic, or whatever size the particles are. Um, evenly throughout the the structure of the, the container of water. Okay. Have you done that before, uh, Armin? No. So I don't know. I, I guess you didn't see it earlier, but what I have is this it's container so here. This is GANS in it, and it's mm -hmm. like when you shake it up normally with GANS, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. But this has stayed this way for days. It doesn't settle out. There's no settling. What do you have? It's uh, distilled water. And, and again. Pardon me? And a, and a CO2 GANS. Yeah, CO2 GANS and distilled water. But I've added a little bit of this um, clear soap. 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 And <laughs> when I added the GANS to the soap, this is what happened um, to the soap. It turned white. Okay. And I only add the bit of GANS, a few milliliters to this, and mm -hmm. it uh, and it was up to here, and it just turned it white as soon as it started to stir it a little bit, and I thought, well, that's interesting. And it doesn't settle out, and then I added a few drops of this, just uh, about a squirt, maybe two, into a, a liter of distilled water here, and it mm -hmm. created this. Mm -hmm. And it won't settle out even after a couple of days. I thought that's interesting. It the, the GANS is suspended. It's able to stay in there. So let, let me shoot in uh, five milliliters here of this. See what happens. Well, again, it's very hard to tell. Have you you been using the GANS soap, Rick? Yes, I have actually. Have you noticed the, the difference with it? Um, I can't really tell. It's uh, just something I I use in the bath, actually. 
and uh, yeah, I just give a few squirts into my bath and uh, with the bath now I also use um, salt water and, or sorry, uh, salt, sea salt and uh, um, Epsom salts and um, Gans water. Oh, okay. And then a squirt of the soap and uh, I figure I'm good to go for a health bath. Well, it looks like on camera from here that it's not, it's doing the exact same thing that it's doing in the other, in the jar that you made first. It looks cloudy. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look too cloudy from here. Maybe it does from your angle or something, but uh, it looks pretty much the same. I'm not looking at big changes, so I'm going to give it another big shot and see what happens here. Yeah, I would I would think that with your soap content, it's it's going to um, be in suspension as much as the soap will allow, and you might if you're if you run out of the soap molecules and and you've got more gans than soap, you might wind up with a, a little bit of precipitate at the bottom. Yeah, that's that would be the test, I guess, is to figure out what concentration of soap keeps the gans in suspension. Sometimes you can see with the laser, but I could, I could see the clouds at the top there for a bit. Definitely there's some sort of layering or, or it doesn't mix immediately. It doesn't just go in and go poof all out. It, it hangs around in, in layers and clouds and so on as it filters through. Hmm. And it didn't just go to the bottom either, like normally with GANs, it'll pretty much head to the bottom as soon as it can. But with this, it just hangs out uh, along the top uh, level here and just kind of oozes around a bit. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to help us with if we want to use it for visualizing field flow. Um, cause if it's a homogeneous system, you're just not going to see the flow in it. It's going to be like looking at any currents well, in the water. One thing um, that can be done is, yeah, yeah, I think that would be hard to see. But what is easy to see is taking this soap, this is the thicker soap. Let me try, uh, I think it's ready to go. Let's see. I'll put a blob in there. Okay, there's one drop. It's making its way to the bottom. Should have taken my stirrer out. And it's making its way, and now just hit the bottom. That's pretty rapidly going down there. Yeah, that's pretty much what I would expect to see. And over time, it'll start to sort of melt out at the bottom and uh, and dissipate. Four little blobs. I put little jellyfish in there. <laughs> Let me see now when I stir it. Rick, how you created your CO2? Um, this stuff was actually um, I got this from uh, Zizen actually. Wow, it doesn't want to mix very fast, does it? No. Now we have an interesting part where there's threads and different sort of chunks in there. And you can see the currents now quite, quite distinctly. Um, they show how the, how the currents move. So it might be able to be possible to, during that transition period, to stick a pen in or some sort of coil system and see if, see how it was affected before stirring it. Hmm. And also, I think if we had some sort of lighting, we'd be able, maybe if the, uh, how this looks. Uh, like you can definitely see, definitely see how the laser, how you can't see because of all the. We can, we can. Oh, yeah, it dissipates the laser quite, uh, quite readily. Let me get rid of some screens here that are too white. White it out. Um, show this side here. Yeah, you 
can see pretty much how it uh, really dissipates oh, yeah. the light, actually. And this one with what we've put in so far. Let me take out this stir stick. as much. Doesn't uh, seem to be. Well, actually, I can see the beam through there, yes. Normally, you can't in distilled water. Definitely can see it. Uh, I need to turn some more lights out here to be able to see properly. Your PPM changed in the water. Say that again? Your PPM changed in the water. Oh, for sure. Certainly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is, like I was mentioning before, this could be a way of controlling and making it even, the PPMs, as far as the, uh, the GANs in the water. How important is the PPMs? Well, as I was just mentioning... Before it's important in terms, in terms of if you, for example, if you look at this cross section of particles in this laser beam, you can all I can almost see the particles in a way, and if we were to magnify that, we would be able to see how many particles there were there, and each of these particles are going to have a certain distance between each other, because it's my theory now that after looking at this that the GANs will find its own position. All the GANs particles are going to find their own position away from each other as far as possible but still within the confines of the container. So with this one we'll have Field, certain... Which will stay in part. Yes, right. So Typically the GANs will stay you know uh, one near another the fields will find their position. Exactly, and due to the fields, um, mm -hmm. there'll be a certain gap between what we call the particle, which is, you know, the, the matter level part of it, or what we, you know, see as something visible. But the fields will keep them all orientated and positioned away mm -hmm. from each other due to the effect of the uh, soap on the environment. And I think that's interesting because now, that gives us a way to control the gap in the fields between the particles. And we already know that water is like a vacuum environment, basically. So that way, through the PPM, as uh, Armin says, the parts per million, um, basically we can have a certain, like it might be that a certain angstrom gap or whatever measurement of the certain nanometer uh, gap of the the GANs, um, you know, fields, maybe it, it creates a certain resonating structure, for example, uh, or maybe it creates a certain crystalline structure just because the gaps are a certain gap and that naturally orientates all these uh, particles into a certain orientation. I, you know, that's raises some possibilities there, I think. Yeah, if the GANS is a big lump at the bottom, it's not really free to move and find its position easily. If it's suspended up in the, the fluid, then exactly. it's like a balloon in the air. Um, it can just spin and twist and do whatever it needs to do. Yeah, I've been thinking of ways to do that. Like what about, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, they have... Uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, sonification bath, it's called. It's made to break up particles, basically. So if you had a sonicator on this, so you it would... You need to create mono gas. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that it's, would be the idea. Meaning, meaning, if you have a one plate copper, second plate is a copper. One plate zinc, second, second plate is nano zinc. One plate of gold, second plate is, uh, you know, uh, nano gold. So this way you create a mono field and you have a mono field in a, in a water. Then you can make your mixtures. But you keep your fields a mono, then you can create any mixture you want. Understand? Then you can mix all together. Then you can have a composite field. Then you can do the test what effect it gives. If I put, let's say, uh, uh, 
zinc and hydrogen, and then I put magnesium and lead. Because one is a higher field, one is a lower field, if you calculate. Then I mix it together and I have a third field. Then one is empty. Armin, can I if ask a question? Any position, it will take a different field absorption. But how, how do you get the, how do you keep the particles from clumping though? Because if, not, we, if we can see them, them, you're not you have a homogeneous field now. You have a in a water. It's a homogeneous. It's a field. Don't go to the matter state. Forget about the particles. You have the field in your hand now. Okay. You have a field interaction, not the particle interaction. You don't interest in a particle interaction. You see field interaction by magnitude. If you have zinc and you have copper, it's a different, correct? By mass, it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they all tend to go to the bottom normally in distilled water, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it is the matter. Actually. Everything goes to the bottom, but the field <laughs> is... Technically, it is the matter. <laughs> no, it's not, it doesn't matter where it goes. The field, you already pass it to the water. You're collecting the field. Right. Now, you mix in the field, so it's a homogeneous. Now you have a, a combination of zinc and copper, or you have a combination of uh, magnesium and copper. Yeah, what started this whole thing uh, at the beginning, I don't know if you were here or not, was uh, a small experiment that I was doing to, be, to, to see if I could come up with a way to visualize the movement of these fields. And uh, um, you don't have to visualize the movement of the fields. They will, they will interact with each other. Because you have ingredients now, you have a, you have a different di di different. It's a lower and higher field and a mixture of it, so it 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 it, it starts the rotation. Well, how we how will we know that there's a rotation happening? Just definitely because it's supposed to? Definitely, definitely no. Then you impose. It, let's say you will see it. Well, this is what we were trying to figure out, is how can we see it? Like with water, it's hard to see because um, there's no, you know, you could have water um, could be in this going two different directions. You wouldn't necessarily be able to see it without some sort of dyes in there or some way. To are you looking for, are you looking for a physical interaction that you want to see, the light that you want to see? Interaction creates light. If you have a, you know, a understanding because it's a higher and lower, so it's always it creates light. Okay, well that would be a good way, a good indicator then that the uh, counter rotating fields were doing. Yeah, how fast you are rotating? What you need from the rotation? You can impose other fields which you can create the matter. What you need? How how near you want the fields to interact? This is, that's why your third reactor is in play. It's amazing. Let me go home. <laughs> I created. Where are you? You're out and out and about uh, now, are you? Arizona. May I ask a question of you, Armin? You can ask any question. Um, what is your process of nanocoding a uh, zinc? Uh, a piece of zinc, uh, zinc. I understand. If you understand the process, you don't want to ask this question. Okay, what do you have? NaOH. Yes. NA, it's a salt. Mm -hmm. If you have a salt, even if you put any metal, it's a you know weaker metal under the salt. Some some they react right away. If you put a little moisture, they will create a nano cover on the plate. It's gonna take a time. Because you bring OH in there, it's a hydrogen, it's an energy. That's why you rapid release, you know, uh, uh, the molecular structure into atomic structure. So just understand, it's a, OH is plays the game. Na, it's a salt. And the caustic. There are many salts. Well, but what the you caustic. Put, what you put in your water. Just consider what's in environment in the water in that box is going to be on the nanomaterial. You have to consider that. I'm trying to, and I'm trying to. Aluminium, if I have anything in that environment where I do nano coating, is going to be absorbed by the fields of nano. 
Because so when you say environment, well, when we nanocoat each product or each um, uh, material, so I have two zinc. I have a zinc here that I that I'm going to make a, a pure zinc. Um, I will not mix with anything. I will just nanocoat its own zinc with the zinc to have monofills. You don't you don't add anything else. You want a pure nano a pure um, zinc field. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you nanocoat one zinc uh, plate and have a, a natural zinc plate in the salt solution with a little NO. Correct. Again, you have a salt, correct? Yes. You have a salt. Yes. But I'm asking you, how do you nanocoat the zinc plate to get that process started? Very simple. You just vapor nanocoat because zinc is a little corrosive with the a caustic, correct? So yes. You put on a vapor so it will turn black. And then how many times do you wash that? What do you mean you wash it? You just put it in a you know clean water and it's washed. So you when you when you steam bath it like you do showed on your videos. And you steam bath it, then you put it in a you know uh, let's say that just understand nano coating takes time to build the layers. Well, I'm doing it five, six, seven times, and I'm trying a different way to do it. <laughs> So I'm just hoping that the nano coating will build. No, nano coating, not one or two times. It's uh, you know, it's enough, more than enough. It's uh, you gotta leave it. You, one time is enough too, because just understand when you could create the condition to release uh, first two layers of the material from nano to uh, from uh, molecular to atomic. This process is ongoing because the condition still is in a caustic, NaOH. So. Until you wash it, it will still go, still grow. Understand when two layers are, or two, two or three layers are created, now they automatically it pulls. You understand? Even it's not in a water, even you put it in a drying process, so it grows. If you leave it in a caustic, it will come in a hundred years, you will see there is no matter left, it's all none. In the lye caustic, it'll just continue, metal or not, wood, anything will continue to break down. Because it will uh, still grow. Yes. You know, even you have you cracked it, if you put a little caustic on it or, you know, uh, caustic environment still, you know, you put a little caustic in a, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, I forgot, capacitors, so, and a sugar too, why you put sugar? Well, that's what I did. I put my sugar and uh, a little caustic in my capacitors, like you said, and it constantly creates the rotation. It's, it's, it's not a point of rotation. It's a CH bond. Sugar is CH bond, correct? You put energy. You release, you release hydrogen in that process because you have a caustic, you know, and the processing is going. Still, in a capacitor, you have caustic, you have sugar. Right? It's still releasing it. You're not seeing it. Uh -huh. It's releases. That's how, that's everything what you put, you have to consider. Because this is nitrogen, this is oxygen, I have extra, I don't know, uh, carbon in here. So everything in your, in your bucket is a CH bond. Uh -huh. Why we use plastic? Because it's CH bond. We need hydrogen for energy. So if we're, if we're nano coating in, in glass containers, which I don't recommend because caustic and glass don't get along, uh, it, it would be a good idea to add extra sugar then no, if to you increase add, that, CH, that CH bond. You can, you can put the hot glue. Yeah. Okay. It's a CH bond. So even the, the caustic process, put the cut a little bit hot glue and put it over there and transfer it. So let me ask you this, Armin, when you heat it, uh, like the hot glue, when the, uh, the, the carbon gets up to that 180 degrees. It releases, correct? You yeah. don't see it. It's heat, correct? It's heat. It's heat. You, you make a, a carbon gas too, if you heat it too much, correct? Yes. Heat, but it's there, because you heat it, you release it, you weaken the uh, matter. You create a condition to weak the matter. You're opening the matter up. Right, you're opening the matter up. And that's what I'm doing. I did, a, well, I'm trying to create a, a, a nanomaterial 
by opening the surface by um, heating a caustic material up to 200 degrees. You don't need to heat to 200 degrees. It creates, a minute you put hot water on a caustic, it creates more than 200 degrees, if you understand that second, when it's a reaction goes. It creates- From the steam. Yeah, from the steam, correct. Well, I'm cooking mine in a slow process. I'm bringing it up from a from a negative from a normal. Cooking a soup, okay. I'm a cooker. I'm a painter. I'm a cook. I'm slow. And then what I do is once it's up to a high temperature, my uh, uh, nano coating that I'm making, then I shut it down real fast with cold water. Hmm. Why? Yeah, I asked him the same question. <laughs> Everybody's got the same question, and this is yeah. a minute. A minute. A minute. You do that, you create the Christmas. It's not, I, I'm just telling Armin this, and I'm just I want to reflect it off of him. It's my feelings, and I, it doesn't really matter. It's let's, let's go. Let's go in other state. Let, let 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 me a little bit different. Let you can do it faster, more faster. You know, uh, understanding how you create a gans of CO two more faster or CU more. See CU, we we put the you know oxygen in the water, correct? Yes, because I use a bubbler. Okay, if you use a bubbler, nano coat your uh, uh, container and nano coat your uh, uh, whatever bubble. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, all the my hose. containers are nano-coated, yes. The hose. Yes, the hose. and the hose that I feed the air to is nano-coated. Okay, so just understand, now you need to add to the water nitrogen, carbon, ga carbon gas. Make it carbonate water with the salt. Carbon, carbon gas? When you make a soda, correct? Yes. What you do? Make a yeah. gas with the soda. <laughs> You're right. Make your gans with club soda. Yeah. <laughs> the carbon water, you are looking for, you know, carbon to pass by, you have it in your water. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Carbonizer things now you can buy for about a hundred bucks and uh, they have bottles it's of not, compressed not, CO2. Not, you, forget, you forget about one more thing, you know, you need oxygen. You will reuse it, and at some time it will stop. And then, if you have a CO2, you know, uh, you know, tank, uh, you know, supplying a little CO2 over there, it's always going to create because you now you have a field. Now, what I'm going to try to put the field outside, not inside the water, so you have pure CO2 because with the plate you already create a field, correct? You need yes. the supply. You have the supply. You have the air. You have the carbon. So now you have a field. Now you have to bring it to Gan state too. So you have everything in, you have, uh, like you, you have put the Gan in the, in the box there. <laughs> like yeah. you paste Gans on the nanomaterial, you know, to absorb the fields, you know, direct to bring the energy. Now you bring the material in the environment and you create the field to, you know, change it to the Gan state, you know. No. And you can you can incorporate more CO2 into your solution as well, just with uh, vinegar and baking soda. Same way you're doing your bubbler. Yeah, you do. You, you know, it's vinegar yeah, and baking I, soda. I, I, really, I bought that, uh, you know, uh, for aquarium, they created that. Uh, it's on eBay. Let me post it for you. Did you just, repeat that, John? Because I'm ready to test it, you know, to see how it is. Oh, hold it for a moment. Let me give you Sorry, that. sorry Mark? Could you just repeat what you just said? Because um, with my uh, pH meter now that I, I finally bought, I can kind of control that with the salt and the um, caustic, did you say? I, did you well, no, no, no. You're, when you're making GANs, you don't put caustic in the solution. That's right. for making nanomaterials. That's who? What is caustic? Same salt. But uh, um, if, you, if you don't want to use club soda... You can incorporate no, no, no. more CO2 no, in the solution not, with vinegar and baking soda. Not but that. you don't put it in the solution. You put it in a separate bottle. It bubbles, makes CO2, and you can bubble that into your solution through, you. through your bubbler. Hmm. Okay. Let me see. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. 
you could blow through it. That might be easier. And that's CO2 yeah. primarily. Well, and well, then, well, then well, you're putting well. your own um, amino acids and uh, cells, actually, and, and uh, plasma energy into it as well, which is interesting. And the chemtrails that you breathe and dinner last night. And mm -hmm. all yes, all of the stuff. So we, uh, off better gas. to blow yourself than to hire someone to blow it for you. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's you. You want you in it. Maybe uh, in some cases, yeah. In some cases, you don't. Maybe you want some well, young, in healthy my case, person. I do because uh, ultimately, I think all of us uh, have to find uh, a unit that's going to supply us life. And like Mr. Kesh said, uh, these things that we're trying to create should start from home. Home meaning us that protects us, and it starts right from the beginning. Uh, the pH of us so that we can talk to the material that's going to go into it. We're going to create things, a plasmatic uh, creation that we'll actually be able to interact with. This is what I'm, that's my ultimate goal. That's what I want to be able to do. When okay. I started doing this, John, and everything, you know, like I wanted, I actually in the beginning, when we first started, I thought, oh, I want to just make a little power and make my family uh, a little bit more free from the grid and all this uh, metering of, of taking from me. It's we really still need that. Listen, we still need that. We, yes, still, we still need to do that because it's enough, you know, we're learning the way we go. Yes. And we're learning from each other. Yes. Because yeah. well, we cannot do every experiment. No. I love to do every experiment. But we do it. You know, then, then we show with each other that you do different and I do different and we come each other say, oh, you know what? We did this or we did that or whatever. Here. This is yeah. Uh, for creating CO2, aquarium, plasma, necessarily whatever mixture you do with your balder, you know, you can supply it. So you don't need to buy a CO2. It's pretty cool. Um, it's uh, only 20 bucks plus six bucks yeah. shipping here. And it's uh, all the connection. So you buy a. Here, the, here's you can the way, yeah, here's the way it works you, uh, you have two bottles with one with baking soda and one with citric acid. And uh, you have the gauges and all the caps and stuff that comes with this kit. To be able to bubble into your aquarium, right. which apparently is good for plants and whatnot. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's a that's a even better way to do it. It's a little more control. You can bring it to your water. Then you have it in a, in the water now. Mix it, you know. First, if you have a carbonate water, that's better. Uh, you know, they, when they make, uh, you know, they have, they, there are some kind of uh, you know air. Uh, uh, CO two uh, pumping into the you know making soda things. You know, fifty bucks or whatever. They, they, they sell in it even uh, with the little CO2 uh, gas tanks and you just apply it and put the water then you have a, your water already carbonated and slowly you just uh, supply an uh, air and a CO2 too in the environment slowly you know yeah. cool. Cool idea. Thank you. air you always have your you know see carbon so you can make a let me, yeah, it uh, looks like, show looks you like Rick, you're doing uh, the same thing I was thinking of this morning, and that was uh, nebulizing CO2 water. Well, yeah, that's exactly right, I think. I found this today at the thrift store. <laughs> but it's um, it's like a humidifier. It's a little mini humidifier. Yeah. Still you got can put the thrift the, store sticker on it. But uh, any, kind of any, kind, you any kind of bottle will fit on. So you could have your GANS water in your bottle, <laughs> stick it on here, and it's got a, a setting on here so you can crank it up. And when it's cranked up, it actually, you can see the steam coming out of it there now. It's pretty, pretty good. So this is, it's a cold vapor. It's not hot at all. It's a, uh, so it sort of bubbles and blows it out somehow. I'm not, I'm not sure if ultrasonic. it's ultrasonic. It's yeah. ultrasonic. It's it can be very good skin care, you know? Yeah, and yep. also for breathing. People are having good experiences yeah. breathing the vapors. This That's how the fellow this. got uh, his teeth rejuvenated. That's what I've been doing uh, this uh, for the last few nights is uh, putting some, uh, I got a room vapor, vaporizer or humidity thing. 
and I've been putting the Gantz in the water tank and uh, putting in the air don't trying to Gantz. help my don't, don't Gantz water. Just the water. Yeah, Need just the water. Know? That's all I was using. If you yeah. have mono, mono, just keep it separate, then you mix it. Then you see what effect it gives it to. Anyway, I was trying to get rid of this cold here and uh, get the, the vapor into my lungs. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want to, uh, colloidal silver um, is about the best for that. No, but as, uh, you know, copper will do so. Yep. The one drop of copper, put, uh, you know, uh, 10 drop of CO2 and three drop of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, three, four drop of uh, CH and uh, uh, use a ratio uh let's say uh, you need the ch you need the uh, zinc and you need co2 and you need copper yeah that's that's about what i was using copper just a drop of the copper not too much just one drop is enough the interesting thing is uh um i haven't been hungry so i'm sort of feeding myself as well <laughs> no, amino acids in there not to feel the hunger because it's a um, connection Armin, uh, Zane here, Zane Lott, says he needs to ask you something. Zane, do you want to uh, go ahead? Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, I, I've been, I'm, okay, I know you were just discussing adding certain things to uh, your GANS production, certain gases. And uh, last week I, I experimented with, um, with some hydrogen peroxide. My GANS were already going. And um, I added just enough hydrogen peroxide to start a reaction. And uh, oh, I can't get my video on here. Uh, I, um, I got some iron GANs, and it looks like it's all protein. And um, whenever I rinse the, the GANs, I have a, a bucket that I've been using for rinsing. And... Uh, um, on the top of the, the bucket is a, a layer of oil. Here, I'll show it to you. So, um, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to make a universal feeding system that would, um, that would feed a lot of people, you know, like they don't have to come so close to it. I put, um, I put some of that, the, the iron in uh, a ping pong ball and got it spinning at a certain speed and uh um just seeing if i could get an effect i, I have a a three stacker that i'm about to put back together and i was thinking of putting you know the that on that of the protein of the the co2 the copper and the, the iron on the coils and then the ping pong balls for the center and see how that would work. Okay, let me show you. One thing, if I find it. Let me... I can't hear you. Uh, let me show you one thing. Can I share? Look at this. Can you see the layer? Yeah, it's showing up nicely. It's something else. But I noticed it, you know, I have a pH of uh, 7 and 7.2 or 7.3 in this water. It's not creating much of the CO2, but it's creating a lot of protein. Okay, I measured uh, here. This is my CA, uh, CH3 box. Look at the layer. Because CH3 is, this is a mesh. Because before it was zinc coated, correct? So start to create this layer then it becomes it was white before it becomes you know brown you know, kind of reddish color and 
It's a layer of fat. It's a layer of fat. Look at it, how beautiful it is. So I collect it all. This is, this is Lidgans. I, I, I used electricity to reduce it. Did you take a pH reading on any of those besides the one that has the beautiful color? Uh, actually, this this was uh, I was doing some experiments when I set it up this box. I just measured the pH. I have created different boxes, so this one the pH was seven point two, seven point three. You know, I I, I just uh, uh, bring it uh, up. Uh, I added caustic, a little bit caustic in here, and and the salt water. And that raised the pH on that. Yes. So you're controlling the, your pH that way. Yeah. So see what, what I noticed that this one start to create a lot, but not CO2 a lot. Did you use a digital meter? Yes, I do have digital meter. Okay, thank you. So you're saying, Armin, that it was because of the pH that it created so much that, oil? That's here. I, I'm measuring. I was measuring. That was the only thing that was different. Like normally, what was your pH before you changed it? pH seven. So I was measuring that. Ninety-two. This was different box. This was different one. Seven. The same box. And you're saying seven created the best um, amino acids? Yes. Okay. This that makes different. sense in a way because. When our when their uh, the acidity of our blood is beyond what is it seven point two three or something like that so it's a very specific range, then we're considered sick or dead if it's just a little ways beyond one way or another. Seven point two nine. So, okay, there you go. Seven point two nine. Then maybe that's what we should be striving for to get the best amino acid production, same as our body would be. And also the temperature. What about the temperature? Have you discovered anything about that, Armin? Like, mm -hmm. should it be at our body temperature to create the most amino acids? Uh, 36. Body temperature is 36. So, so that's probably a good temperature to, to keep a, a system at that was creating amino acids, especially if it happen to be your own amino acids that you were working with, I suppose. I'm sorry, Rick, I didn't mean to be a stickler about the pH, but that's why I bought the meter and that's why I didn't do anything before this, because I think that if you want to create a system that uh, communicates with yourself, you have to have the pH is right. Mm -hmm. That does make sense. And I'm sorry, I... I you know, I started out this, this is, way. This is silver, see? This is pure silver, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The nano coating on top? Yes. This is, this, is, this is the plus and this is the minus. Look, they both, because you're applying energy, so it's in a caustic. See how they become black? And this was the GANS out of it, uh, you know. See the GANS? They become light silverish, whitish, silverish gans. So when you watch that, Armin, how did how does the top layers that float like that? Are you what? Are you afraid to lose those? No, when yes. you're washing, when you're washing, it will come. You you leave it; it settles. Yes, it's going to take a little bit. As time to time, just. You know, just hit the bottle. You know, a few times, uh -huh. and it will, and it will, uh, you know, bring it down all the particles, and then you just dump the water, whatever caustic water or uh, salt water, and you wash it. Start to washing it. You know, do the same process again and again, three, four times is more than enough with distilled water, uh -huh. and that's it. Keep okay. it in. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, please. 
that's all. <laughs> all right, thank you, Herman. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Here's my list here. Uh, Lee, did you have something else you wanted to bring up, or did you already bring that up? I already brought that up. I was okay. going to talk about that vaporizer, the room humidifier. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to pre stage you there. Um, Zane, do you have something you're wanting to show there? Or I see your videos on. Your audio's off. Let me unmute you so you can talk. Do you want to talk there? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to show y'all. See the. Okay, let me spotlight your video so we can see it. Okay, go ahead. You see the fan on top of the uh oh man. Phone's messing up. You see the fan on top of the water? This is from the whenever I was transferring the water, washing it again. I have all my nano coating on the outside of my buckets. I just started these yesterday with new um, salt solution. They're getting kicked off. Right. Can't hear anything. No, we can hear you. No, no, what I'm saying, your connection, you have to keep it. See, your connections are copper. You don't yes. pay attention. If you have zinc, zinc, and you have a, your copper connections, if it uh, attaches the water, you will release the gans of uh, copper too. So consider everything what you do, guys. If you want to create a mono, just in your environment has to be, you know, one metal only. So one is do you connect your plates with a copper wire, or sorry, a zinc wire, or would you use copper, uh, but no, above no, it, above the, the surface? Wire, but I don't fill up the water up to right. the, not to touch the copper wire. So you right. just, that's the process. Okay, good, good. So you can continue. Maybe it'd be a good opportunity to ask Armin about what, what assists in rotation, you know, how to, maximize rotation as we we're talking about earlier okay do you want to respond to that armin or? i'm sorry one more time i wasn't hearing i'm sorry can you uh, just 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 earlier we had some people talking about finding finding difficulty in, in identifying or getting field rotation with the with the balls is there anything that you can add to sort of that that assists and helps in getting that rotation with the you know balls and fan units fan units you don't need the fan you don't need the motor oh. okay the motor that's what i mean yeah what i'm saying you don't need the motors you can you, that's what i explained you need the gradients Today, Mr. Kesh explained it very nicely. You know, go, you know, thoroughly today's, you know, teaching. Just listen again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I missed that one. I've got to go back and catch up. You are dealing, you are still thinking in a matter. Okay. If I put this GANS, that GANS, that GANS, whatever GANS. And you calculate what's the ingredients for that gas. What one it has to be weaker, one it has to be higher. Yeah. Then you have the mix of them. Okay. Yeah. So about getting gradient, gradient. Just go listen to this workshop. It perfectly explains. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up on it. Thanks. If, if you don't understand, just leave it for a moment. Go back to next day or other day. Go listen yeah. other workshop and come back again. You will understand. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. It was a good workshop and I, 
what I got from it was that um, if we make our GANs and then we go to um, uh, a plasmatic state, um, we want the higher states on the outside drawing to the middle, which would be the third part of our MAGRAV system, which you want to, what I understood was the, the mixing of the two would be the, th the third part of the middle. Is this correct? Would that be correct, Alman? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, this, this was in the international workshop, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Fields, not matter. Fields. <laughs> I can confirm it's fields. I, I'm taking care of a pond uh, and there's some koi in there. Mm -hmm. And the koi came up like they were gasping for air. I've never taken care of a pond before. And um, so I made a little spice bottle with CO2, CuO, CH3, and zinc waters. And um, mixed with more uh, distilled water. And I put that in the pond and within, oh, probably less than half an hour, the koi weren't gasping for air anymore. I was really amazed. And it was just waters. There was no gans in the water or no visible anyway. Um, I was pretty amazed. So feels as, feels as what is that? Yeah, past the, if you understand, if you put, let's say, hydroponics, if they put a, you know, CO2 water in a hydroponics, you don't need to feed anything else. Yeah. You don't need even hydroponics to put it in the water. Cool. You can create an environment in, a, you know, in your, uh, let's say, hydroponic uh, space that is CO2 in the environment. We burn gas, correct? Yeah. To to the uh, uh, plants to feed from the CO two because they need that. The rest of it they will absorb They're right away. If you have a CO two, if you have a uh, go look the uh, pick up a leaf from the tree. It, it turn upside down. You will see one is shiny, one it's like uh, velvety. The you know uh, bottom side it's a velvety it's a, and the top side it's shiny. Why is shiny? Because uh, when you when when it absorbs the CO or creates the CO two, it right away brings the amino acid on top of the leaf. That's why it's shiny. Yeah. <laughs> two different nano coated plates. The leaf is made of. In between, it creates the CO2. It's enough to create CO2, absorb the CO2. The rest is coming. It's free. Well, I got to say... Oxygen, these, nitro, hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. These fish are having so much more better time than they were before I had that. They're swimming, they're playing, they're as, as if they're renewed koi. So it, it works. <laughs> So just you need, you know, uh, to hang the balls around, uh, you know, your hydroponics that, you know, you have the field interaction now. Now you have, you don't need the gas to burn. You need, you know, the field that it's, it's there for them. Like you bring the field in a box to create the CO2. Now you bring the CO2, uh, you know, so now you have a plasmatic condition. Now you bring it into your room. and see how your plant's gonna grow. My plants are growing fantastic in my room. I've just been putting CO2 water into their water. They're all hydroponics. Well, not all, but many of them are. I'm yeah, amazed. Because, because, because now you have a field, feed the field. Yeah. 
One thing that I've, I've noticed uh, looking at the agricultural aspect of this, is there a change in the uh, required light levels when you add the CO2 GANs? What levels? Well, certain plants, say tropical plants, if you're growing them indoors, you're looking at somewhere around uh, uh, about, about a thousand watts for every square meter. Mm -hmm. um, now that's that's a lousy description or a lousy measurement, I understand, but it's, people understand that. If we add CO2 GANs to the system or CO2 GANs water to the system, do we know if that light level requirement drops? Uh, now you have a field in the environment. Your plant don't need that energy to go search for, you know, uh, for CO2. Okay. To the environment now. It's absorbed it because it's a nano uh, nano material, the leaves, you know, the whole structure. So it absorbs the CO2. Now you brought the same thing, like it's a coils. You brought the GANs on top of it. You brought the energy. So the nano material is not looking for absorb the energy from the environment. It's right on top of it. So that the next layer on that would be to assist the plants in its photosynthesis and creating its sugars. So if we were to add the CH3. Oh, you are, yes, you are CH3. That should take some of the load off of the chlorophyll process. Correct. Hmm. Gonna have to try that. You have an energy now. Add little bit CH3. You have energy. Transfer the field. CO2 water that you try, you know, just... Yeah, John, that'd be a great experiment to see if you can grow tropical plants in lower light levels than normal. Yeah, don't put anything in the water. No, uh, you know, uh, other ingredients, just put CO2. Pure yeah, water. I've spent a lot of years teaching kids how to grow hydroponically, and uh, one of the big issues is having sufficient light levels regardless of what kind of nutrients you have. If we can, if we can. Again, so you didn't understood that. Your, 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 uh, you, your plant is taking whatever it needs from the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can reduce or, or uh, broaden the, the window of light level, um, that would go a long ways to help a lot of uh, indoor agriculture. I know that. Note that uh, nanoparticles have special properties, and uh, some nanoparticles actually act as light emitters at a certain size. Um, they found that I think with the gold nanoparticles, and some others as well, possibly some of the ones that we work with. So um, it may be that you know spraying a plant with uh, CO2 GANs or maybe it'll end up being gold GANs or something like that um, can actually create an interaction with the plasma fields that is similar to the action of light, you know, sunlight or artificial light on a leaf. In other words, instead of coming from a distance of a few feet away for an artificial light or in the case of the sun, uh, 93 million miles away, and it takes eight and a half minutes just for the sun to arrive here, for the light to arrive. Um, instead, it's being instantly transmitted at a nano level, nano measurement level, from the, uh, the, uh, the nano particle, but it's actually the fields, the uh, plasmatic fields of the nano-sized uh, item call it whatever you like. So maybe there is a way that we can basically spray on sun on our plants and grow them in the dark. You can grow them in the dark because you have an, you don't need to spray. Again, if you hang your balls, it's an interaction which is going to create an environment. Have CO2 interaction. Look, CO2 box, you bring a carbonate water, you bring a carbon in the water. You have oxygen, you can have make a CO2. Now you have it in the environment. Now you have a field in the environment. Which your plants will absorb, they need the CO2. 
to photosynthesize the rest. Amino acid, which is on top of the leaf. Yes, it would definitely be nice to have a greenhouse where the lighting in the greenhouse is so you can see to get around and not so that you can keep the plants alive. <laughs> okay, in the nighttime, you know, uh, it's a uh, plants are absorbing uh, CO2. Why? In the daytime, you know, they release the oxygen. Because daytime, it's the sun is there. It's a more of a, you know, a plasmatic field, not the earth field. Nighttime is more of an earth field. That's why they release, uh, they absorb the CO2 and daytime, they keep the carbon, but release the oxygen. The field difference. Nighttime is a field is different than a daytime. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Thanks for that. You're welcome. This is all in the teaching, guys. Slowly go back, listen, you know, parts from there, parts from there. Yeah, it's a little bit easier because I've been in every teaching, so I can remember things backwards, you know, from a year or two of the teachings because I paid attention. So you can do that too. Go back and listen, you know, all teachings, you know, Rick, you know, everything. You've been in every teaching from day one. Exactly the problem is way too much information, way too much information. And it's hard to keep going back and simplifying. Just keep it simple, keep it simple. And yeah. Keep it simple, to not to keep it, complex. you know, what we learned, you know, but we remember certain things, then we connect. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then it's easy. So. That's all. Who's going to do first? Who's going to fly first? Who cares? You know, the thing is that we brought to the people that we teach freely and everybody understands. They're not hiding anything. They do their experiment. They bring it up. Oh, I did this. Good. Now we know. Let's move on. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you, Armin. That's the way it should be. Uh, for many, many years, people have just hidden things that they've found that work, and then they uh, they hold it and try to sell it to people. You cannot hold this in technology. No, this is free. It's a joy, and it's to pass it through, and I hope it's a, for everybody, it's a joy going to be to pass it through. And so, I'm so happy to be part of it. You don't carry anything with you, you know? You just no. gave it everything. People that try to profit from this idea will pay dearly. You know, can I tell you one thing? Profit is still going to be there until we, go, we come to the point that we understand. Everything is understanding. You know, we, we're right now, without, without profit, you cannot survive. You're not going to keep your family. Right. You're not going to make anything. But in your understanding, you understand that your neighbor is the same too. You know, let him have it too. Yes, I would give it to my neighbor and everybody freely. Yeah. Then you bring it, you know, all totality that everybody do the same. And they enjoy, you know, to create new things. So if it's going to be on this planet or the, in the universe, it's the same. You enjoy where you are. I never feel bad anywhere I go. <laughs> I mean, Zimbabwe or I mean, United States. <laughs> well, I'm, in, I'm in Detroit, Michigan, so it's kind of tough here. Well, you're yep. making it. <laughs> so, you know, some of the times the, the hard places we live in just make us tougher, basically. As they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> but boy, it's hard, hard uh, in some places to survive. But like Armin yeah. says, Armin has a, a good attitude wherever he goes. And he's been 
virtually all over the world at this point, uh, traveling through business or personal reasons. And uh, yeah, I think that's you know, a big thing is having that positive attitude wherever you are, and that makes all the difference in the, the way things turn out. So that's uh, uh, you, you just can't can't lose your sense of humor or or that sense of wonderment in the world. You know that that questioning that part of you that questions how does this work? You know, well, I think yeah. you can't lose that. You know. Dear what doesn't kill me, I'm strong enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And that makes us better people to help others as well when that situation comes up. So it's all good in the long run. So, okay, anybody else have something for show and tell here tonight? Anyone? Uh, Salma, I saw your video was up there briefly. Did you have something you wanted to show? Talk about any other questions from anyone? Ron asked in the uh, live stream, how do you nanocoat lead without melting it? And then he says, I guess lye would be the only way to do it. Yeah, uh, uh, the the caustic process is not going to get hot enough to melt lead. Right, and even melting it may not nano coat it. Uh, it uh, it does get nano coated from actually lead nano coats itself quite readily. Uh, it's always got like copper. It always has a oxide coating on it, um, but. It does, it does take on interesting coatings in the case of uh, battery terminals I've noticed over the years. I've seen so many different colors of substances growing on uh, lead uh, battery terminals of cars that it's ridiculous. And some of them grow literally over the whole top of the battery. So, but that's not the kind of nano coating that uh, that we're interested in. That's actually more of a chemical uh, um, mole molecule type process rather than a, a nano coating as such. So, and also with lead, I suppose you could use electricity for a lead electrode metal tend to coat it as well. <clears throat> lead is a subject I try to keep away from. I've had enough lead in my life and uh, <laughs> I try to keep it away from my body instead of being around it. Some people have had bad responses with lead, uh, uh, making lead gans and every time they walk by it, it they, their hand twitches. <laughs> <laughs> one person said so they they put it at the far end of their shop so they don't have to go buy it very often it's, so, it's crazy every I've, I've gone to play with the lead a couple of times and then i i'll hear someone's horror story about it and then i'll, I'll put it aside and yeah it's sort of oscillating now i'm just gonna do it yeah yeah it's funny because i have no, no problems with touching lead this the the material substance i've done that for years uh, i did it today i i put the battery terminals on a uh, you know the connectors on a battery and the terminals and the battery connector were both uh, lead and yeah you know i took yeah. my gloves I mean, off to do it because the gloves were awkward lead capping on roofs and things like that and i've always had lead around you know Yep, but what was in the headlines of the local newspaper for Victoria, B.C. today? Lead poisoning in the water in the school systems. That's most, oh, really? one of the most disgusting things I've read in a while, where they just recently tested the water systems in all the local schools, and a couple dozen schools had way too much lead in the water supply, even after the flushing process that the uh, custodians are supposed to do to f supposedly flush out the lead out of the system. They still have, it's, 
you know, and it's proven to be cognitive uh, impairments and all kinds of stuff from lead. I mean, even the Romans figured that out a long time ago. That was the, one of the cause of their fall of their empire. And here we are in this modern day and age, and they don't have regular testing of the water supply for our kids in the capital city of the, you know, the, the most uh, expensive province in the, one of the most expensive countries of the world. This is outrageous. This is just unacceptable to the nth degree. And now they have to sort of try to get it into their budget, and it's a big kerfuffle. And, of course, everybody's freaking out about it. They should, they should be. And uh, I just can't understand. How, well, I can. It's because they have cutbacks in their funding, and the school board says, oh, well, we tested these two older schools, and they were okay, so all the rest of them should be okay. They have newer systems. No. Well, the, many of the newer systems were worse than the older systems. So it's a, it's a, oh boy, it's a big one. And it just came up last week about the northern communities in Canada having the same issue. Uh, one in particular have really high uh, uh, mercury levels in their water supply and lead, but mostly mercury in this case because of the, uh, the mill that operated there for years in the 1960s. The government thought it would all go away, and of course it got worse instead, and uh, now they have kids that are deformed and all kinds of problems going on because of that. It's, it's no yeah. mess to clean up. We, we have issues here in Australia with uh, house renovating because a lot of the paints they use sort of pre-70s lead-based paints. That's right, so, yep. yep. You know, you know, think of that. You know, no. they, you're family going with a stripper and sander and caustics to strip you know mm -hmm. paint off and uh we actually actually poisoned poisoned our cat that was walking through the sandings from the paint oh, yeah. and then licking its paws you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. wow so like that just keeled over on its side and went into spasms you know oh wow mm. yeah yeah uh, so that was a big wake-up call yeah yeah so imagine if we had maybe a a, a gans paint that we could paint over the uh, lead paint and it deactivated it and then when yeah. you removed it it your cat could walk in it and it wouldn't be any problem it would already be bound up to the gans and no longer free to be able to you know be ingested or whatever it's yeah. entirely I possible do. something like that could work yeah and again with the water supply uh, you know mercury in the water supply Surely we could have a GAN system of some sort that could act as a filter. We know the GANS goes to the bottom of water wherever it goes. That's where the mercury is in these rivers. It's right down at the bottom in all the cracks and crevices and sludge and so on at the very bottom of the river where the gold hangs out and all the heavy metals. So why not the, the GANS uh, injected into a river system and have it trickle along at the bottom of the river and picking up the, uh, the heavy metals and uh, uh, pollution as it goes and maybe you could retrieve it at the end of the, the run of the river and uh, or maybe it wouldn't matter at that point that maybe it could even be ingested by fish and it wouldn't uh, stay in their in their uh, organs and so on the way it does now with lead as a as an ion that's it's, yeah, uh, well, turn it into a commercial uh, operation, retrieve it, and, and, you know, that can employ people to, to do that through all the rivers, you know. Yeah, uh, once, once that uh, catches on, I, I mean, this, this is definitely the way of the future. Well, the way I see it is instead of having military fighting each other, we sh the military will be employed to clean up the environment. And that will be our, our, our duty as uh, humans is to try to make our environment, wherever it is in the universe, better from our passage rather than worse the way it's been uh, traditionally, it seems. Yeah, <laughs> where, yeah. where humans go, you can pretty much smell them. So they leave yeah. a trail. It, it'd make it a lot more palatable to pay your taxes when so much is going to the military if they were being used for that, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. All 
right, so we're going to end things fairly sh soon here. Any last minute stuff that people would like to bring up or demonstrate? Uh, Guy, do you have anything there that uh, you wanted to show and tell this time around? Anyone else? Does it matter what protein you use whenever you're making the feeding system? I mean, do you need a combination of like so many of them or is iron, copper, and um, CO2 good enough? Well, people you are using, um, for example, some feeding systems, people might use uh, a fruit or a vegetable and put it on top of uh, uh, Gans water set up or some sort of uh, health cup and infuse the uh, liquids of the health cup with the fields of the uh, fruit or vegetable and uh, use it that way rather than just the Gans from the from the uh, from the three main Ganses. Um, hey. Go ahead. Thank you. There might be some other feedback on that. There's other ways and means of uh, of using the food food ganses depending on how one wants to go. I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I tried it. Tried another method um, using a blowtorch and ashing it down to just ash, and adding adding that to the CO two in the health cup. You know, I've got a thyroid problem, so I used uh, egg yolks, which is supposed to be a good source of natural sulfur, and mango and banana. I just ashed it right down. No, mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, some people say that they don't want to burn the material too much, uh, but I think that there's well, there's a couple of schools of thought on that. One is that you can't burn it too much basically you can take it right to the carbon stage and it'll still retain the memory of the fields in the material yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm sort of working on whether that's the case or whether you just lose it all it's right and that's the other, the other aspect of whether one might lose the fields and so on um for example in nano coating if the copper gets too hot then you can destroy the uh, the nano uh, coating the uh, the copper yeah. oxide structure can can get actually destroyed um, but on the other hand at a certain temperature the copper might be red hot but the nano structure will stay in place with the uh, copper oxide it has a higher melting temperature than the copper itself so, yeah, well, it's kind of like, well, you know, look what happens in a in a fire in a forest or something like that. Do you lose all of the minerals, all of the salts, all of the, you know, the, the, the whole aspect of it because it's turned into carbon or, you know, do you retain that, you know, and it just changes form, you know. I don't know. Right. So how many times can something get burnt and turned into carbon again and it gets recycled and grows and burns and recycled and grows and burns and still retain the memory of the original cycle of what happened. Exactly. It's kind of like the aromatherapy type of thinking of being able to reduce it down, reduce it down, reduce it down until there's no elements of it, the original left, but the field interaction still there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's kind of the, uh, the uh, idea I have with this container. I can see that this definitely has the particles in it now from, probably maybe 20 milliliters of the substance from this container. Yeah, you can see how it's changed now. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you can almost see the, well, you can. You can actually see the particles inside there. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's evenly distributed. Yeah, That's yeah. So you can tell with the laser. Yeah, the this, laser's much broader now. Yeah. It's pretty much uh, even all the way up to the top. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, normally in Gans water, the Gans will settle to the bottom, 
and you'll get completely clear at the top. You won't be able to see the laser at all. It'll be clear distilled water, which won't reflect the light. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and normally you would see a little bit at the bottom where the GANs is still floating around a bit, unless it was totally settled out. But this, it just, it, it starts right at the top and it's pretty consistent all the way down to the bottom. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. So I'm not sure, well, remains to be seen how that can be used, but I pretty sure that is, well, pretty sure that's quite useful for something. <laughs> something well, that was, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's part of it, it's a step, definitely, I think. Wouldn't that mean that the uh, amino acids are just um, floating? It's now uh, expanding in the new container? Well, I don't know about amino acids, if there's much amino acids in here. I, I Maybe uh, you mean the soap itself has amino acids, I guess. Eh? Yes. Now it's, it's, it's uh, multiplying itself by replicating itself and expanding itself in that, in that new container. You only put maybe 15 or 20 cc's of that in there. Now it's almost like the amino acid that uh, is growing or, or just it's expanding in that glass. Yeah, the way I see it is the, the actual particles, if there's a particle here and a particle here, then in, the, uh, in the, this stuff, then right. basically they're sort of jammed in together and there's not a lot of mobility and so on. They're all just next to each other, lined up. Yeah, but it's unlocked. They, in, they go into this stuff, which is a, basically a, a squirt of this into a liter of water, and it goes to this, and then the particles are able to move apart, and each one takes its position as far apart from the other ones as it can. And the fields, like Armin was mentioning, that the fields are interacting, the, uh, that Coulomb barrier between each um, field that's expanded out to, to fill the container as much as possible, much in the way that uh, a gas will expand to fill the room or container that it, it's in. Uh, and the liquid will fill the container too. But normally with the GANs, it doesn't expand to fill the container. It just goes to the bottom with the liquid, with, with the liquids, or you know, as a solid, it, it would just sit there on the desk. It doesn't expand out into the room um, unless we have uh, maybe a, a plasma vapor. Um, but this, as you can see, then we're at the next level where that's expanded out. I'm going to let this sit overnight and just see if it has um, actually settled out any. Is perhaps it will with this viscosity of the the soap, and that's only a what a few drops, maybe you know a, a drop of soap or a few drops of soap basically in there. Maybe you could put a powered up coil on either side of it and take take a reading before and take a reading after and see if it interacts. You know, what, what about okay. if you added uh, copper gains to it? And started a communication line well that's yeah. right uh, it this opens up a, a, a new area to me because if now the co2 is all all those particles have expanded out to where they are uh, held in place now mm -hmm. suddenly they're able to communicate with each other because they're not all jammed up and so on yeah. their fields yeah. are open and and receiving you could say now what if like, you add some of the the copper oxide GANs in, in into that, which is also probably going to have the same effect with the soap. I expect it'll be a it'll be an expansive thing, and then suddenly you've got the you know this electrical network put into your skin network more or less, yeah. and uh, maybe throw a little CH three in for energy boost and. Uh, Perhaps that'll be the three layers all sort of working within each other. The particles would interact and maybe have enough uh, uh, gradient between them to, to actually cause some, you know, uh, rotational effects or some sort of uh, interaction at least. Especially if the particles have exactly the right um, gap. gap between them and the right 
proportions. Like proportions have come up recently as being important. Uh, Kesh has mentioned uh, having, uh, like and Armin just mentioned, something like 10 parts CO2, one or two parts um, copper oxide, and one or two or three or four parts of the CH3, for example, as one potential sort of mix. Um, you know, so maybe that those proportions in a certain uh, dilution factor <clears throat> would bring these particles within the, the proximity of each other that they actually start to interact with their fields and maybe that will create the light between them that we want. Just yeah. the, the random action of movement and because they're at a certain distance might be enough to go like zoop and light flash goes off and zoop and it's suddenly we have a maybe a glass of a glowing light the new so drink, drink of the year the glowing gans drink you know i think that's what we're all looking for as creatures we're such visual animals you know we're yeah. looking for something we can see you know um yeah, it's interesting. Um, you can already see it. <laughs> yeah, so the other thing I want to do is take some of this stuff and put it in a, a clear sphere and rotate it and see if it forms the GANS rings or is it going to stay um, mixed up and not separate out like normal. Well, I think it would be interesting to see if the new solution that you just made gets cloudier. Because that'll, that'll potentially tell us that it's multiplying in the new solution that you just made. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, that's a good point. Yeah, I can look Visually. at that. And that might mean that the uh, amino acid from the soap is helping to feed uh, the Gantz and the new solution that you just put it in to now expand itself in the solution so that it becomes as cloudy as what you have in the mason jar. Mm -hmm, quite possibly. It's, uh, maybe it'll get uh, make the soap thicker too, even. <laughs> maybe maybe this all, will suddenly yeah. become jelly-like or something. You've come up with a new soap-making solution. Yeah. In, yeah. Who knows? In any case... Years. In any method. case, it does seem like a good idea to have the CO2 GANs in soap. I'm, I know we're still not into touching the CO2 GANs as such, and we talk about you just using the GANs water. But even that in itself, the GANs water in the soap is a great idea. But I think the yeah. GANs in there, I think it's perfect because it, it does dissipate. You're not getting a big clump of it at once. You're getting a nice, even dispersal. It's of so many parts per million. It's not very much. Like I say, I only put a little bit of GANs actually in here in this larger container of soap. And uh, um, yeah, I think there's something to be investigated uh, with that yet. I can but see. It's, uh, it's one of those things. There's nothing to say that if you just used the CO2 water but it doesn't have the same field effect. It's just because we want to see something, you know, that it's visual. You can see it separating, you know, that makes it so appealing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, it's true. And uh, that's why I got this glass today. It's actually sort of a, it looks like a lab beaker. Maybe it is in, a, in effect. It doesn't say Pyrex on it or anything, but uh, it had this neat little stir that came with it too, glass stir. So I couldn't resist, and uh, it was perfect for being able to see through clearly and see see also the distance and watch the GAN settle out and so on. So I wanted to do some experiments with that. And of course, the dollar store always uh, uh, gives up something good in those circumstances when you need them. <laughs> <laughs> and I like this little ironizer it's thing too. Card, Rick. Pardon me? Yeah, you need to get a lab coat. A lab coat. Oh, I do have a lab coat <laughs> that I wear sometimes. Yep. Anyway, I think we better wrap things up for today. Um, some people have to get ready for the private teaching going on in half an hour and so on. So, 
any last minute uh, questions or comments? A lot of food for thought. Thank you, Rick. Good. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Uh, yeah, it's always a, it's always fun to hear from people and get all the different ideas. And uh, some of them are quite challenging, and others uh, are just interesting at different levels. So I really appreciate everyone's input. Yep, good one. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Always inspiring. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Thanks. Take care, everybody. I'm going to end the live stream now.